Ugh, finally, after all that grinding, I'm finally level 95, bro. Oh, I'm about to do so much damage now. A lot of damage. But I want to take a break. Ah, I want to see some people on Twitch real quick while I'm waiting. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Ah, here's Twitch. And uh, this looks a uh, fancy star. Uh, top streamer, a eh? pigeon life. Who's that? I guess I'll click it. Yeah, champ. We're popping up right now, bro. Look at this damage, bro. I'm just saying, this guy's pretty good. Nice try. His counters are pretty sick. He's doing so much damage. What? I want to see if I can do this. That's actually insane. What? Three million? Okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. All right, so that gamer dude was here. I'm try to attack this guy. Big damage, not bad. <coughs> I'm hitting like that guy, bro. 160. This guy had like 20, 10 times more than I did. Uh, I guess I'll just not play this game anymore. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't be that guy. There's 10 ways you can do more damage. With the class tree, you definitely want to prioritize skills that are important to boosting damage. So for a quick example, here's a tree that does not do that. So basically you're missing a big damage boost here. Uh, you just max out like step advance, for example, dex boost, things that don't really yield good damage. You now you have the Kana gear in this skill. You went for like skills like these, for example, and no average chance, no weak stance boost. You gotta focus on things that actually enhance damage for your class. Since this isn't a guide for class trees, which I'll probably make in the future, uh, you'll probably find a lot of resources like that online, like on Reddit and things like that. And to continue off the skill tree, you definitely want to speak with your class NPC. Here I'm speaking with the Braver NPC, and she gives you an extra 14 skill points if you complete all of these client orders. Uh, it's usually the perfect Braver and first class Braver. Usually for your class, it would say, uh, you know, the perfect hunter, for example. Uh, and if once you complete all these, you can get that extra 14 skill points to make sure you can actually get those quality of life skills or finish up some skills that you haven't even completed all the way. To begin with mags, you definitely want to make sure you level it up correctly. So here I'm showing you one of my first mags I ever made, which was definitely not leveled up correctly. Uh, you don't want skills to be everywhere. You want it to be maxed out to level 200. So, you know, 200 striking, 200 range, uh, and so on. And to build off of this, there's actually a skill in class trees that can actually transfer these abilities. So for dexterity, you can max out that skill and actually transfer it to become both striking and ranged. And that's only for bouncer, braver, and those three other special classes. To be more specific, here is the braver mag ability, which actually adds a fixed proportion of your mag's dex to both S and R attack. So it has a 100% transfer rate of how much points is in dexterity to S attack and R attack. So if you have 200 dex, you can also have 200 S attack and 200 R attack. With class combinations, you definitely want to make sure you're using a good subclass that works really well with the main class. Uh, even though you can use every single class, whichever way you want, you definitely want to make sure you're going the meta direction, if you will, to actually be able to perform really well and do that nice damage. Uh, for example, Braver Hunter is really good and also Braver Phantom. So with the weapons and units, of course, it's a no-brainer. You definitely want to make sure you get the best ones currently available. Uh, right now in the Japanese servers, there are 15 stars. So you're going to want to make sure you get those weapons as soon as possible so you can actually do some nice damage. Uh, of course, you can find them in missions. You can get them as drops in certain urgent quests or emergency quests. And you can also get them as tradable. So you can trade a material for 15 stars. Moving on from weapons, we also have the units. Of course, you definitely want to get the best in slot, like mentioned before. Currently, we have the 13 stars in the Japanese servers, but even though some of them can be 13 stars, you have to make sure you find the appropriate ones with certain HP or PP bonuses that fit your class the best. To delve deeper, we have the Arx Visa Phone website here. It gives us all the units available and what actually is on the unit. So for the Liberate unit that we had previously, this one comes with 60 HP, 15 PP, 75 all attack, and 385 all defense, which is a pretty solid overall unit. Of course, there are plenty of other ones. This one right here that I cannot pronounce has 40 H, uh, HP, 10 PP, 100 Dexterity, 90 All Attack, which is a pretty, pretty powerful unit. Um, but that's what you're trading off for, you know, less PP, less HP, but more attack. And of course, you have the Shovel unit, which is also a good overall unit. It has that 100 HP, 12 PP, 
394 all defense, but only 50 all attack. So you're trading more HP, less PP uh, for, uh, for more defense, basically, for this unit. Whatever unit that you can find that matches best with your playstyle or your class, you'll definitely want to focus on those units. With skill rings, you definitely want to make sure you have the appropriate one for your specific class. Here, I have Katana Combat Countup, which increases the number of hits Katana Combat actually does, so you can do much more damage during Katana Combat as a Braver. With my right ring, I have Critical Strike Striking Ring. This increases the hit rate of Critical Strikes and also increases the damage of Critical Strikes. So it's almost like an Infinity Edge from League of Legends. With Braver, you can almost have 100% crit rate, which basically means you're having a flat damage increase just because you're wearing this ring. On top of that, you can also put rings on your units. So here, for example, I have Jumping Dodge. This is a very valuable skill. Uh, it's like a nice quality of life skill to have. It's not like the first ring you'll probably get, but something you'll get immediately after you get your primary rings. Like for example, Katana Combat Up and Sea Strike. My second unit, I have Short Combat. So in Katana Combat, you can fly around when you do normal attacks, but I'm not a fan of that anymore. Uh, short Combat is definitely uh, effective when I like using it. And lastly, I have Automizer Lovers. This one increases the speed of Automizers used, or Misers period. So like, you know, Moon Automizers or Star Automizers, you can use them very quickly so you don't have to have that delay. Photon Arts are definitely important. They really do determine how much damage you can actually do against a boss or some mobs or AoE things like that. Definitely want to make sure you're using the appropriate ones for certain situations you're actually in. Since this isn't a guide specifically for what PAs to use and how to use them, for example, I'm just going to go over some examples of how PAs can actually affect how much damage you're going to be doing on bosses. So with Braver, of course, we have a few PA options we can use. We have Soccer Endo, which is very good for stationary bosses or mobs. Uh, and Gekazakuro is a good combo extender for it. Of course, since you can't craft certain PAs in the NA servers, you'll probably just keep mashing Soccer Endo instead. Kiran Kikyo is very good for AoE, killing mobs like in missions and things like that. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's very good for uh, AoE damage. And then you have Asagari. This one's really good for movement and speed. You wouldn't really use this on a boss because it doesn't do that much damage, but it's a very good gap closer and it does some extra damage if you want to just close in on them with it. Of course, this also applies with techniques. I'm not going to go over which ones to be using and things like that. I'll just be brief. You have Grants and Gig Grants. Those are pretty powerful techniques you probably want to be using. Uh, you know, you're not going to be using Shifter or D-Band because those aren't going to do any damage to bosses, period. Uh, they're just buffs. So you want to make sure you're using appropriate techniques and know what they do so you actually can perform more damage. Dust attacks are the biggest part of doing a lot of damage. So you definitely want to make sure you're landing each dust attack that you see. So it's basically that red circle you see whenever you do an attack. So for example, you see that circle around me every time I do an ability or an attack, so you can see a red circle. So every time that red circle hits your body and stops, that's when you want to do an ability and you get that perfect dust attack. So it does like a beautiful bonus damage. So for example, you'll see yourself light up every time you land down. So here you can see I'm doing 86,000 for my first slash of soccer endo and 115,000 for my second slash of soccer endo. And this is when I land a just attack. In this example, I'm not even landing a just attack, and you can see the difference already. My first slash is doing 66,000, and my second slash is doing 89,000. Now my first soccer endo slash is doing 20,000 less damage, and my second slash is doing 26,000 less. That's basically 46,000 damage I lost on that one attack alone. Just attacks or JAs alone are very important to increasing your damage. Affixing is definitely one of the more important tasks to do in PSO2 to really boost your damage. With the fixing, it really sets you apart from the best in slots. You can definitely cap out on the grind level and things like that. And what comes on the unit with the fixing, you can actually break those limits by adding more damage, more PP, more HP, or any other stat that you really need to add on a unit or a weapon. I have my katana here. It's capped out on grind level, so now I fixed it, and now it has 165 striking attack, 20 HP, and 13 PP. With this bonus damage, I can actually break the normal cap of this weapon and actually go even further. So you can also go to units. I have my rear unit here. Currently, I would have 200 S attack, 150 R attack, 120 T attack, 30 defenses, 
30 dexterity, 65 HP, and 16 PP. With units, basically you have these stats permanently because you never take off your units or swap them, rarely ever, when you're doing missions or quests. Of course, this isn't a, a fixing guide. I'll probably make one in the future. However, this is just letting you know that fixing is definitely one of the biggest parts of increasing your damage as well. Buffs are definitely important to increasing your damage. There's four we're going to talk about, but the first one is going to be drinks. They're located in the camp ship and also in the lobby as well. So currently I have 4,287 S attack. We're going to take a sip of the best shift to drink there is since I have premium. So here's that premium drink we we're talking about. I'm going to click it here take a sip. And I got my large attack boost. So I'm sitting at 4,938 S attack now. That's almost 650 extra S attack. Of course, there's also the random EX drink. This one gives you some kind of weak point boost, which also does a very good amount of damage. Uh, it's not that straight raw damage, but it's still very effective. For the second one, we have the team buff tree. Team buff trees definitely do vary depending on what team you have, if the tree's maxed out or not. But for my case, my tree is maxed out for my team. With this, I can get an extra 20% damage boost. So let's take a sip right now. All right, so here's our level eight attack boost, 20% up. And now looking at my stats, I now have 4,547 S attack. That's about 260 S attack. To go more in depth, now I have the team buff and the drink as well. Now I currently have 5,329 S attack. That's basically 1,000 more S attack just because of those two buffs. The third buff are the cuisines or food buffs. For example, I'm just going to use this meat stir fry. You can obviously craft them using 10 red meat. 10 coast olives and 10 ruined grapes. You can get red meat by just running free fields and killing all the mobs. You can get coast olives as well from the coast by gathering and ruined grapes as well from the ruins area. So let's use this buff with all of our other buffs. So now in total, we have 5,429 extra S attack from that extra 100 bonus attack. And for the fourth one, we have timed abilities. Timed abilities are abilities that you can get from crafting and it can also boost your attack based on what location you're in. For my timed ability, I have a divide quest one. This one will give me 70 S attack if I'm in a divide quest area. Normally, my unit would have 200 S attack. However, since I have this timed ability, I have an extra 70, so it shows up as 270. Of course, you can do this for all three units, as I have here, one, two, and three. So now I have an extra 210 S attack just from these timed abilities. To put the pieces of the puzzle all together, I finally have 5,639 extra S attack from my original 4,287. This is a huge buff that really does help. It's almost 1,400 extra damage just from taking buffs. So just with a quick overview, with timed abilities, you'd usually get that through crafting. So you can go to a physiphone near you, hit craft, and you can search for crafters. And once you're here, you can search for timed abilities. And once you're searching for time abilities, you're going to want to search for anything that's level 3 and that can actually give you that nice bonus attack. Since I was talking about my divide quest ones, I'm going to show you this one. These time abilities can give you anywhere from 20 plus attack to 50 plus attack. However, you can also get a bonus one that gives you up to 20. So once you scroll down looking for someone like I have here, this person has 50 S attack and 20 S attack. So it actually gives you all the 70 S attack you'll need for that extra 70 damage. Once you find that person, you're going to want to click on them and then go to their room and then request for it. I would go more in depth, but this isn't a guide for timed abilities, just to show you how timed abilities can give you more damage. Ah yes, the good old practice. Practice definitely will make perfect in this game. If you see yourself dying a lot to bosses or not rotating your PAs correctly or photon arts correctly, and you don't know when to fight bosses at a good time, or you think you might die whenever you're going to fight a boss, definitely you got to put that practice in to learn those bosses, learn the rotations, and definitely figure out how to fight that boss without dying too much and doing as much damage as you can as possible. That's basically how I got really good at the game as well. If you see me playing Force, I'll probably play like a newbie because I've never played Force. I don't have as much practice, but I have the knowledge about the class, so it probably won't be too difficult but I definitely won't be playing at the level that I do with my Braver. So you gotta put that practice in and get good, kid.